Hello, my name is Chris Letizia, and I am a seminarian studying for the Archdiocese of Boston, currently serving here this summer at St. Anthony of Padua Church in Cohasset and St. Mary of the Assumption Parish at St. Anne's Church in Hull. This year, Pope Francis instituted a special day in remembrance of our grandparents and our elderly. This day is centered around the feast days of St. Anne and St. Joachim, who we know are the grandparents of Jesus and the parents of our Blessed Lady. It's so important for us to recall the lives of our grandparents and the elderly who have touched our lives in so many ways. Those who have influenced our faith, who have taught us to be the people we are today. I recall in my own life two special people. My grandmother Phyllis, who was such a woman of great faith, often praying the rosary twice a day for her family and for the intentions of her family. Monsignor Robert Gigi, who was the pastor at my home parish in Natick growing up, was a big key in me entering the seminary in 2016. His life of faith, his devotion to his vocation, and his love of God's people is what inspired me to be a seminarian and God willing a priest one day. We all have stories, hopefully good ones, of our grandparents, our elderly friends, neighbors, and family. In this video, you'll see a couple of our parishioners who are grandparents giving testimony to their lives as grandparents, some of the struggles and joys they've experienced as grandparents, and some of the hopes and desires they have for their grandchildren, specifically in their lives of faith. On behalf of Father Scott, Father Will, Father Anthony and myself, we hope that you will take this weekend and pick up the phone and call an elderly person, a grandparent, an elderly neighbor, a friend, a family member, and let them know that you're thinking of them and praying for them this weekend. We will also have baskets at the churches this weekend where you can place specific intentions for elderly grandparents or the elderly who may have passed on to God. Please enjoy this video, and may God bless you all. Yep. Hit the camera. All right. So I'm here with Bob and Mary Ernst. They're two grandparents from our parish. And uh, what parish are you, do you belong to? St. Mary's or St. Uh, Anthony's? So we're here in St. Anthony's. Oh, yeah, excellent. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your grandchildren, uh, how old they are, how many you have, uh, maybe your children, um, where they live, and whatever else you'd like to share. You take the grandchildren. I'll take the grandchildren. Okay, so we have four grandchildren right now, two granddaughters that live in Colorado, Evie and Millie, and they are almost six and almost four. And then we have two other grandchildren, Riley and Jude, Judah, and they just moved in with us. They're gonna be with us for the next 10 months. They live in Virginia, um, but are here temporarily with their parents. And Riley is almost four, and Jude is 16 months. Our, uh, as far as our children, we have six, uh, three of which live in Colorado, uh, married, uh, with two grandchildren. And we have two, one that lives in Charlestown, and one that lives in Virginia Beach, which is here with us. And Maggie, we have special needs, good little girl that's, uh, well, she's not a little girl anymore. She's going to be 26. Yeah. So uh, it's a one half back family. So your grandchildren are still on the younger side. Um, what have been some of the joys, some of the experiences you've had, um, maybe even some challenges that you've experienced uh, with your grandchildren that maybe you'd like to share? Well, I think the challenge that maybe any of us face is that wanting our, children, our grandchildren to be raised in the faith. Uh, so happy that they're all baptized. Um, so that's, that's been a blessing. Um, and the challenge really has been, or the concern really was when they were born. So certainly with our son and daughter-in-law who are living here with us right now, he's military and so he was always gone. Um, and so they, 
waited to have their children baptized together, and they were baptized here at St. Anthony's this past November. So that was a wonderful experience um, to have them both baptized uh, here and at the same time, and it was beautiful. So I would say that's the biggest hurdle early on, and then just wanting to expose them to the faith when they're afar, but they are young. They do watch and pay attention and notice. I think like this necklace, which I got from my mom, um, scapular metal, and they'll just say, you know, what's that mean? And then I can just begin to talk about things in a very casual, natural way. I, I think I'd add, you know, we, we've talked about this. And, you know, without being oppressive to our children or to the parents, you know, to, to basically uh, live by example, to, sh to teach them how to do things by example, but also to have, you know, you know Christian books around for little kids, you know, Noah's Ark, and, you know, Jesus books, and crucifixes on the wall. And when we go to church, they'll say, where are you going? And we'll say to church, and they'll ask why, and we'll talk about it, to see God, to pray to God, and they'll ask a question, but not to be overwhelming about it. Let them just hear it, kind of direct, not direct them, but. They're intuitive. They're interested in what's going on, and um, I haven't. We haven't done it yet, but I'm certain there's some you know, Christian-based cartoon-type character things that they'll watch and they'll find and they'll generate questions. And we're hoping to promote this unintrusively and um, then engage parents as well. And uh, can you speak a little bit about your own parents and maybe your own grandparents and maybe? Be um, how they've influenced you either in your faith or in your life in general and then maybe some of those things you've learned from your parents or grandparents that maybe you want to uh, bring on to your children and even your grandchildren. Um, well, so I didn't really have a lot of time with grandparents. They all passed away. My mom was the youngest in her family. Um, and So anyway, the influence, the strong influence in my life was with my parents. I was raised in a very devout Catholic family. It was certainly Mass every Sunday and even daily Mass during Lent. Um, somehow my mom would manage to get us to Mass before dropping us off at school. So their example, um, it was very powerful to see not just the faith of my mother, but the faith of my father, to see a man on um, get down on his knees, that humility of praying. Uh, so that certainly influenced me, and I hope to give that example to well, I hope I've given that example to our children and that it continues on to our grandchildren. Uh, I think mine pretty much the same way. My, my parents weren't, my grandparents obviously were, were older and they lived far away back then, back way back then. You didn't go see them regularly. And on my dad's side, I didn't know any of my grandparents. Um, but you know, we basically, you know, we went to Catholic school. Uh, my parents were faithful Catholics. You know, church, holy days of obligation, um, rosaries. Uh, it, it, it was just the way you lived, you know. In other words, we had big Catholic schools, big, big church organizations, and a lot of our life was uh, we, it revolved around our our grade school, high school. In, in high school. Um, it was a wonderful upbringing, and I didn't really know any other way. Uh, it, it, and I would say that that's you know, kind of what we're hoping to do here, but we got we have a little work to do to bring all the crowd, if the family crowd back to go to church regularly, it, and with and with a belief in faith, you know, having faith, which is important to get to that point. And what advice would you give to to couples that will be newly grandparents, will be grandparents for the first time, and you know, maybe what are some of the things? that excited you when you first found out you were going to be grandparents or maybe some of the struggles, you know, what advice would you give to others? Well, the biggest piece of advice, and I would just say generally in every aspect of our life and every day is pray. So just prayer and, and begin with that, you know, if you aren't already, but as soon as you know that you have a grandchild on the way, um, prayer is so powerful and um, that will take care of the, you know, the big parts, the most, um, the joy of becoming a grandparent is, uh, there are no words. It's just when you see, for me, when I see my children 
as parents, it's, you know, you love your children so much. And then when you see them become a parent, um, I, I, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what advice would I give parents? Uh, you know, that's again, it's, it's a hard question. I think it would be to just be, be, be example. Everything would be, I would think, to show it by example. You know, you might talk to your kids about things such as, oh, when are you going to get them baptized? And, and, and make that an exciting time. But it's all, I think, example. And um, plan it out, because, you know, I think most parents today uh, or you know, grandparents today probably have the expectation that we, not the expectation, but the realization that it's going to be to some degree on them to help foster uh, the faith. And it may be back that, you know, that your children get back to being more involved because they're for their children. And, um, but you can't be over overburdened, you know, you can't be over, uh, but um, pushing, pushing, can't be pushing. You know, it, it, it maybe when the kids start, the grandkids start asking their parents these questions, that will motivate the parents, you know, to make a move. You know, because everybody thinks that they're too busy, it's everything. Else. But uh, that's what I'm working on. And pray, 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 pray. Bob and Mary, thank you so much for your time and your testimony and your stories, and uh, know of our prayers for you your children and your grandchildren. You never forget the moment you first hear that you're going to be a grandparent. Our moment was last October. Our daughter Kayla and her new husband Rich, having only been married for a month, stopped by the house and they handed us a gift bag and to our surprise inside was a baby onesie that read, you don't have to ask when you will be a grandparent, June 2021. We were so excited. I won't lie though, at the same time I was counting back the weeks since their September wedding in my head, and yes, it was a honeymoon baby. I decided I wanted to pray every day for our soon-to-be grandchild. Somehow, I decided on what was called Four Beautiful Prayers to St. Anne and St. Gerard. Mike and I faithfully prayed every day those prayers for Keegan until he was born. Kayla's pregnancy wasn't an easy one. She was sick a lot throughout her pregnancy and developed high blood pressure, putting her into a high-risk category. We continued our prayers and rosaries. Kayla would often join in on the 8 a.m. morning rosary Zoom to pray for her and baby Keegan. It was a blessing for us to see that she knew who and where to turn to in her time of need. It's something we have always wanted to nurture and pass along to our children and now our grandchild. An ultrasound revealed a possible problem with Keegan's head not being formed correctly and as you can imagine the anxiety increased but so did the prayers. We have been blessed to have many holy friends. Those friends immediately began praying for Kayla and Keegan. One of those friends sent Kayla and her husband Rich to meet with Father Tom DiLorenzo, a healing priest from St. John the Baptist Church in Quincy. He prayed over Kayla and Keegan. Later we would learn of the connection to St. John the Baptist. I was trying to prepare myself for the unknown, trying to be positive, prayerful, and strong but it was hard sometimes. It was always in the back of your mind. I remember being in the checkout line of a store one day and staring me in the face was a coffee mug that read fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139, 14. It spoke to me, it was powerful, and I liked it, so I bought it. I needed to hear that. No matter what, Keegan would be fearfully and wonderfully made, and later this verse would speak to me again. The doctors decided it would be best to schedule delivery three weeks early for the health of mom and baby. They would have a doctor from Children's Hospital there in the delivery room to evaluate Keegan. One of the Medjugorje prayer groups that we belonged to was excited and hoped that Keegan would be born on June 24th, the 40th anniversary of Our Lady's appearance to the visionaries in Medjugorje. The doctors decided to induce Kayla on the June 21st. Off they went to the hospital and started the induction and nothing happened. The next day, the 22nd again, nothing happened. At this point, it was decided to schedule a C-section at 8 a.m. in the morning of June 23rd. That morning, we received a text message that they were bumped to 10 a.m. Several hours later, we received another text and a 
another and another as the hours slipped by, each one informing us that they had not gone in yet. Kayla was starving at this point, and you know what happens when Mama Bear is hungry. You don't mess with Mama Bear. <laughs> by 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the head of South Shore Hospital, OBGYN, came in to apologize to them for all the delays. Apparently, there were many, uh, so many deliveries and emergencies that day. She gave Kayla and Rich the option to have dinner, rest, and be the first one on the schedule for the next day. The next day, June 24th, I couldn't believe it. We were going to have our Medjugorje anniversary baby. On June 24th, we both went to morning mass. Unknown to me, it was also the feast day of St. John the Baptist. This was another confirmation to us that God was with them as they had prayed over, been prayed over at St. John the Baptist Church by Father Tom. I remember trying not to be distracted at Mass thinking about the delivery. My distraction left when I heard the responsorial psalm, I will praise you because I have fearfully and wonderfully made you. There it was, the verse that had encouraged me for the last several months. I knew they were all in God's hands. Right at 9.30, we received the text that they were on the way to the OR. As I was turning to head out of the church, Judy said, we are not leaving. We are going to the tabernacle to pray the rosary. We prayed the rosary there until 10, 11 a.m. when we received the text that Keegan was here. Doctors examined Keegan and said he was perfectly healthy and his head was fine. Mom was also doing great. All of our prayers were answered. Carrying that cross of worrying about Keegan was not easy, but we helped help along the way. Looking back, we see the hand of God and all the saints at work in our lives because of you, Keegan. Saint Anne, who we prayed to for nine months, helped us and brought us, the, brought us to this day on Grandparents' Day and gave us this little faith story to share. God even used that little coffee mug to speak to me. Keegan, you mean the world to us. Our love covered you in prayer. There really is such a thing as love at first sight. Keegan, our prayer is that you will always put God first and stay close to the Blessed Mother and the saints. You will always have Papa and Grammy and your entire family there praying for you. God bless you, Keegan. And will God bless all you grandparents and those who make a difference in the lives of others. As we celebrate this first World Day for grandparents and the elderly, we take a moment to ask God's blessing upon our grandparents. Almighty God and Father, we ask you to bless our grandparents with long life, health, and happiness. May they be a sign of living faith and love and of your presence for their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. May you grant eternal rest to our grandparents who have gone before us, marked by the sign of faith. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.